Welcome to Gospel Apostolic Church Ikeda Parish, where we raise ambassadors for Christ. Join us and together we will journey through a mind renewing, soul lifting, spirit transforming experience in God's presence through His Word. Let your transformation begin. And Lord, we worship you. We declare that there is none like you. Glory to your name forevermore. As we go into your word, the entrance of your word brings light, and gives understanding to the simple. Open our hearts this morning that we may see wondrous things out of your law. Thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Shall we have our seats? God bless you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Matthew chapter 6, I'll read from verse 19 to 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Hallelujah. Today, by God's we will look at Kingdom Investment Part 2. Kingdom Investment Part 2. Earlier on, we, that's about two, three weeks ago, or thereabout, we looked at the first part of this series, if you like. If the Lord wills, we take it further. Investment, we, this, we, we defined or we said, we agreed that investment is an act or a process of engaging in activities or endeavors or efforts that would yield or with the expectation of yields in terms of profit, returns, income, revenue, in the present or in the future. We said investment could be an act or could be defined as an act or act, a, a set of activities. Engaging in activities with the expectation of profit. Definitely there is something in mind for every investor there is something yield. What am I expecting? What is the reward? <clears throat> what are the returns? And you begin to look at the rate of returns before you can put your, your treasure or whatever it is that you want to invest. Hallelujah. So in every investment decision made, at least from the side of the investor, there is a price. There is a price. So uh, the investor bears a cost. Definitely some sort of sacrifice is made for every investment you pay a price, expecting something in returns, whether in the present or in the future or in the near, not too far away anyway. Uh, some of us could remember, uh, okay, MMM is still fresh, right? You remember MMM? How many of us know MMM? You've heard about MMM? Oh, you know. 
probably you, you know, you know, some people actually, uh, they, <laughs> on body wally and before the thing, <laughs> they were wise enough. What is that? Body daddy. Perhaps you were lucky. You were among the lucky few. And a few years ago, about 10, 11 years ago, no spectacle. How many of us? Okay. It's a well anyway. <laughs> you know, those were the years of Wonder Bank and uh, I think the, around 2008-2009 financial meltdown. It was a serious one. Even Nigerian stock exchange became a Wonder Bank at the time. You know? So, definitely everybody expects a reward. Hallelujah. And so it is even in the in the kingdom of, even God is an investor. God is an investor. If you read um, Matthew chapter 25, you will know very shrewd. God is a businessman. He's an investor. And, and he expects reward. So God could be a capitalist. Hallelujah. Amen. So, and um, as the saying goes, before you invest, you must investigate. So you, you uh, ideally, that's the ideal situation. <laughs> Nigerian politicians are, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I'm always talking about, you know, I'm a Nigerian. I'm a concerned citizen. In Nigeria, politi everywhere, politics is investment, particularly in Nigeria. Hallelujah. Big time business. Big time investment. Amen. Amen. If you're a Nigerian politician, you don't need to do money rituals. Hallelujah. So you investigate before you invest. Here, in the text that we just read, our Lord Jesus Christ gave a very insightful perspective on investment, considering where and where not to invest, how and how not to store up your God-given treasure. Hallelujah. He said, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break in to steal. So, this implies that you cannot sow with an earthly value system and expect a heavenly reward or a heavenly harvest. You can't sow with an earthly value system and expect a heavenly reward. In other words, it, it's not just talking about, when it's talking about treasures here, it's not just talking about money. You know, when anytime we read this, the first thing that goes to our mind is Jesus is talking about tithe and offering. Bring your offering to the house of God. And people will say, and, and some men of God cash in on this. When you bring your money to the house of God, your money goes to heaven. And God is building mansions for you in heaven. I'm, I, I, I'm not disputing that fact. But when you bring your money to church, your money does not go to heaven. They don't spend naira in heaven. They don't spend dollar in heaven. You know what Jesus calls money? Unrighteous mammon. Hallelujah. So when you bring your money 
to church and you give your tithe, your offering, so to say, it doesn't go to heaven. Your money does not leave the earth. But the honor goes to God. So, it is not about what you do. It is not particularly about the size of what you do. It is about your heart. Your value system. Hallelujah. Where is, he said, where your treasure is, your heart will be. Your treasure is your God-given, that he's talking about your God-given treasure. When you give, what are your expectations? Many times, we give with the intention or with the expectation that God is a money doubler. And, you know, we, okay, we say a hundredfold, hundredfold, hundredfold increase. And to some people, he's talking about when I give 1,000, God will give me 100,000. You have turned God to a money doubler. Tripler. No. Hundredfold increase according to heavenly, you know, uh, uh, kingdom dynamics might not even have to do with monetary returns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there are times that all you are thinking about giving, you know, investment, Sometimes you can give money. And that is probably not even what God is expecting. He wants your heart. He wants your, the totality of your life. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must know that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the opposite of faith, many times we say doubt. The opposite of faith is not doubt. It is flesh. It is flesh that produces doubt. So the opposite of faith is flesh. And they that are in the flesh cannot please him. Hallelujah. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. They, Romans chapter 8 verse 8. They that are in the flesh. So that is what produces doubt. Amen. Amen. So, if all you labor for, he said, lay not up for yourself treasures in heaven. Sometimes your treasure here could be your expectation, your hope. All that you labor for, all that, you know, everything about what you are expecting what you work for, what you live for, if it is earthly bound, he said, we are amongst all men the most pitiable. Hallelujah. So if all what we labor for and glory in and consume your time, your energy, and your resources on, are the tangibles of life. That's a way of laying up, storing up your, your treasure on earth. Then you are limited. Then you are not strategic. 
lay not up treasures for yourself on earth. Everything is about the tangibles, what the eyes can see. He said, by faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. So that the things that are made are, you know, the things that are made are produced by the things that eyes cannot see. Things that are invisible. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 16, uh, verse 8, Jesus said, he said, the sons, the children of the world are in their own generation wiser. Another translation said they are more shrewd. That is, they are more strategic than the sons of the kingdom. So if all our so-called faith and, you know, serving God, coming to church and singing, dancing for years and, you know, Sunday, Sunday worship, if all it can produce is running after the vanities of life, <laughs> you are storing up your treasure on earth. Your God-given resources Amen. I want to give you a brief illustration on what Jesus is trying to talk about here. How many seconds? You know, we have men, we have gurus in the house and uh, mathematicians. How many seconds make one minute? Please answer me. How many minutes make one hour? So 60 seconds, I, you remember now, 60 seconds make one. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Make, hallelujah. Hello, hello. Remember we are still, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still preaching. <laughs> Amen. 60 times 60. God bless you. Eh, somebody said 360 there. 3,000. So, in one hour, we have 3,600 seconds. Okay? 3,600 times 24. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Google it, Google it. Oh, I can see some people doing. Oh, no. Eh? 86,400. Wow. Now, imagine, God bless you. Nice one. Imagine one second represents one dollar. So in a day, you have 86,000. Four hundred dollars. That's not even up to one person's earning in a day. But let's let's just narrow it down on that. So you have eighty six thousand four hundred dollars, so to say. Okay. Okay. Let's let's assume because Jesus said, "Are there not twelve hours in a day?" Because let's look at, but assuming 86,400 or maybe half of that, how much of that are you committing? You have that every day. Every day. How much of that are you investing effectively to advance? the purpose of your existence to, uh, to, to, to advance the kingdom of God. You remember we are talking about kingdom investment. In 86,400 seconds in every day, 
Is it all about your paycheck? Is it all about your job? Is it all about chatting? Is it all about Facebook? WhatsApp? Is it all about drinking? Partying? And, you know, what are the things we do within those 86,400 seconds? Hallelujah. Ah. Uh, I want to quickly profile, if time permits, but uh, I, I'm looking at two um, portions of the scripture here, but let me take one first. Okay? If you can look at the two, fine. If not, maybe I'll continue some other time. Luke chapter 10, from verse 38 to 42. And Mark chapter 10, from verse 17 to 22. You know, I want to uh, examine two scenarios here. In Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42, Jesus went to the house of Martha. And, um, you know, uh, Martha and Mary so now he came to pass, and as the wind, I entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was combat, distracted, engaged about much serving. She was serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus, hallelujah. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were sisters, probably of the same parents, but Perhaps two, you know, varying thoughts or value systems. While Martha was encumbered, distracted, engaged, very busy doing the, it's, it, please don't get me wrong. It's very good to serve. But you see, the greatest and the most creditable, just like we heard last week, form of service is to be at the feet of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. When you dwell in God's presence, you understand the purpose of service. It is possible to serve God and still miss it at the point of service. Jesus said it will come to pass that some will kill. That was Apostle Paul thought he was serving God when he was sore. So it is possible to be going against, you know, moving against God. Josiah thought he was serving God. Josiah was the reformer. He was, he was, he was a great guy. He became king at the age of eight. But he could not, yes, he, but he, 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 he did quite.
quite some great things. And he was one of the best kings that Israel had, uh, sorry, Judah had ever. But he died before his time while he was serving. And he was serving God. Imagine Pharaoh. Pharaoh, a perceived enemy of God, was telling him, hey, 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 God has sent me. Imagine Pharaoh saying God sent him on an assignment. And this, you think you are serving God. You are moving against God. God will fight you. But he, he was not discerning enough. He wasn't. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, but you are encumbered with service. But one thing is needful. One thing. And if you look at the text, It is bad and it's a great calamity when you lose out the purpose of those things that God gives you. So everything that will rob you of fulfilling the purpose of God's blessing in your life, every value system. That will make you not to possess things and will make those things to possess you set off. Trade it away. Suck the value system and lay up the treasure in heaven. So that it doesn't become a stumbling block.
Philippians chapter 3, verse 16. Say, This is one thing I do. Forgetting the things of the past and looking forward. Say, For this purpose, I count not myself to have apprehended.
is little. He said, and Mary has located that one thing. I pray for the power of grace to locate that one thing the Lord will be able to us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Kingdom investments. As I begin to follow up, how much of our treasure are we investing in God's presence? That is where 
glory to men dwell. That is where real home. You know, the, the first, first one and then second. He started, he said, and Jesus was more hungry than his friend. It is the glory of God to see, but it is the honor of kings to survive a man. Thank you. 